think we're back again. I think we're live again. This is faith, and I have faith too as well. Uh, these games are insane. Uh, replay. All right, let's play the intro. I saw a little bit of someone else streaming this. begin instruction to move use left analog stick okay all right cast them out with the a button I think we're ready to go. All right, I guess we'll follow the path. Turn up a little bit, I guess. Let's keep going up. Wow, okay. Turning it down a little bit. Uh, there you go. Okay. What the hell? You're invited. Come celebrate Nate and Jason's sixth birthday. Saturday, May 3rd, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Directions, turn right at 1338 Snake Meadow Hill Road and go straight past the well. Oh my God. Maybe I can Jesus my way through the front door. Nope. Can I go to the sides? Oh, what the? What? Okay. Well, it didn't go so well. Then try going down. Whoa! So 
<laughs> okay, we did something with a tree. Today I noticed Amy's favorite tree looks like it's dying. All the needles are falling off and the bark is peeling. I guess I'm more upset about it than Amy is. She is totally absorbed in her volunteer work at the clinic. I guess it's good that she found something she's passionate about, but I've gotten ugly looks from some of the women of book club. Kathy and her religious friends won't even talk to me anymore. It's a deer. I love the voices. Can I catch the deer if I'm sneaky? Hmm. Let's go this way. really slow. Is this just looping? Yep, it's just looping. All right, let's go up. There's the deer again. You matter, deer. Ah. Fuck! Fucking thing. Am I supposed to catch the deer? Ooh, what's this? This is new. Public lecture by Carl James Osborne, Connecticut's Historical Connections to Witchcraft, Satanism, and the Beast System, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Piss off. Ugh. I can't understand what he's saying, but it sounds hilarious. All right. That's the invitation. We saw that one already. deer again. <laughs> oh, a different house with a different note. <laughs> the Mart oh wow, well, this is alright. The Martin's house lies about a hundred yards off Snake Meadow Hill Road. There's almost no driveway. Trees jut out in the middle of a gravel path that is mostly covering grass. 
It was difficult to find the house, especially since it was already dark when we arrived. Father Allred seemed to know where he was going. He simply drove straight ahead until we arrived at the house. In the headlights, I saw an old shed off to the right of the path. Father Allred explained that he would rather perform the exorcism away from the house, but the Martins had insisted that Amy remain inside. He complained that having the family rep Pre uh, the family present makes it difficult to proceed with elements of the right that may seem harsh to the layperson. All right, let's go in. Mm. Oh, it's a key. Oh, oh. Ooh. I knew that was coming. All right, we got the key to the house. Yeah, this game is weird. It gets... I actually have only seen the sequel, and it gets even weirder. I think he said, worship me. I am like super priest. Bob, the kids and I miss you more every day. The twins and Amy have started their next school year here at home. Amy keeps asking when she's going to be allowed to go to real school. I think she's getting cabin fever. The twins are having no problems occupying their time. Yesterday, they came in with their hands covered in blood. I guess they found a dead deer and thought it would be a good idea to touch it. I think we might have a coyote problem because when I went out with them to look at the dead deer, it was a pretty gruesome sight. All this just a day after the twins' birthday party. Can't wait till you come home. Mmm. Mmm. It's so easy to die, though. That white thing is fast as hell. No! Yo! Oh! That was close. That was close. <laughs> Y'all suffer! Mr. Martin. It has taken longer than expected registering the markers on your property as a historical cemetery. Our office has had difficulty identifying who was buried there. The inscriptions on the gravestones are written in a language that we cannot identi identify. I've sent the gravestone rubbings to some of my peers at the University of Connecticut. I will reach out to you when I get a response from them. All the best. Daryl Henderson, State of Connecticut Historical Society. Bitch! Oh. He doesn't turn around so fast, so when that thing comes out, it's tough. I'm lost. Mm. Oh, there's the tree. I think we're getting close. We can go up, maybe it might be. Nope. Oh, shit. <laughs> the deer got messed up. Let me give him his last right. Uh. Water, that's new. No! Mortis. 
All right, at least they gave me a save point. That's cool. Worship me. <laughs> Worship me. I already did this one. He's so loud. Oh, shit. Let's try going up. Nothing. There's the well. Right, I guess I already exercised that. Uh, I want to find that big house again. Fuck. I didn't save the deer. Thought I would be able to. What's that? It looks like a squirrel. Oh no, what? Oh, it's like a pentagram. Trying to get back to the road. It's another deer. Okay. We should be able to go straight up from here. Probably one more screen and we were at the house. Nope. Oh, there you go. Yeah, oh, I saw something in there. Nice. Mr. and Mrs. Martin greeted us at the front porch. Mr. Martin led us downstairs to the basement, explaining that Amy was down there in restraints. I felt for him. There was guilt and shame in his voice. Amy was in the very back of the attic in a chair, perfectly calm, staring at us. It is hard to describe the look of her face, it was not the kind of look a child gives you. All right, let's see. Is there anything in this pot? What's, uh, oh. Okay, family picture. What about this clock? Hmm. 
bedroom. That mirror is gonna be cursed. Oh, there's something unfollowing me. Mm. How about this closet? Ooh, just had a sneezing fit. All right. Living room. Everything looks okay here so far. Cursed lamp, maybe? No. Back door picture on the fridge. Uh-huh. What's this? The basement? Yep. Ooh, there's blood over there. Baby crib. Dear Amy, thanks for writing. It really brightened my day hearing from you. In your letter, you asked, what's the weirdest thing I've seen as a missionary? The area we are working in has a lot of folks who practice Quimbamba. It's what you might call a pagan religion. It's kind of a mix of Catholic and African religions. One of the saints they worship is San La Muerte, or Saint Death. Yesterday we talked to a boy about 15. When we asked him if he had ever prayed, he said, no, but I have prayed to San La Muerte. He told us about a time when he stayed over at his cousin's house, and according to him, pr they prayed to some figures of San La Muerte San La Muerte, and the figures made things in the house move around. He got real quiet and scared looking after that. We told him he could pray to God and that God wouldn't make him feel scared like that. We invited him to church, but he hasn't come yet. I need to wrap this letter up and get back to work. See you in four months. Leighton. All right. Washing machine. Mm -hmm. Water. No. It's a doll. Mm. What the sewing machine? No. Amy's parents could not endure witnessing the proceedings of the rite for long. Mrs. Martin was hysterical, and the thing that was inside Amy was feeding off of the fear. Father Allred asked me to take the Martins upstairs. I was physically worn out, but managed to get them back up the stairs into the kitchen. Amy was screaming, Mother! Mother! the whole time. Finally, I got them to sit down with me at the kitchen table. After a few minutes, we couldn't hear much of anything down in the basement, so I went down to check on things. I found Father Allred lying on his back, unconscious, with his arms spread out wide. Amy was not in the chair. Oh, boy. What the fuck? Ah. She is here. 
Oh, oh shit. She is here. I guess I was the only one who thought to check in the attic. When I got up there, it was freezing cold. I found Amy standing in the back, looking straight at me like when I first met her downstairs. We spoke briefly, although it was frustrating to talk to her or it. I experienced a bit of deception from the demon. During our conversation, she uttered my mother's first name and in other instances spoke perfect Latin. I called for help from the others, but nobody came. So I raised my crucifix and began the rite again. Like in a different place. I must be in the upstairs. Oh boy, all right. She can come out anytime, anywhere, looks like. Okay. She's coming. All right, just gonna keep keeping her at bay. <laughs> it's a rubber ducky or something up there. There we go. I don't feel safe in my own home anymore. I hear voices outside around the house at night. I don't let the twins go out in the woods to play because I'm afraid of what's out there. The house itself feels stressed, distorted, slanted somehow. It's like I'm walking through a carnival funhouse. Amy's condition has only gotten worse and I can't stand to be around her and I don't know why. She just doesn't seem like herself anymore. I want to take her to the doctor but I can't leave the boys here. I find that the phone stops working throughout the day, and now I can't seem to find my car keys. Thank God Bob comes home tomorrow. How do I get to the attic? Bob must be stationed somewhere in the Middle East because he sent over this weird looking doll for Amy's birthday. I'll ask Anish about it next time we have book club. She looks like she could be from over there. Amy didn't seem excited to see the doll. I think she would rather have a phone instead. Or maybe seeing a baby doll makes her feel self-conscious about working at the clinic. Oh, no, you don't. Hmm. It's like Simon. What's up with this world map? Nothing? Let's go back, uh, go back downstairs. Oh, that's the door of the attic right there. Okay, yep, there, and that opened the door. Let's go up. Oh, shit. Karen, the church might contact you in a few days to tell you their version of what happened to me. I want you to hear it from me first. A year ago, I was involved in the exorcism of Amy Martin. What they said in the papers about what happened isn't true. She, oh, my superior father with, uh, when I confronted her, she... Redacted, managed to cut the power to the house and redacted, redacted. Her own parents with their own. I have to go back to that house. The nightmares I'm having are real. She's still there waiting for me. I can still help her. If I don't come back, know that I'm 
love you, and I'm sorry, John. All right, this is clearly not a good thing right there. Whoa. Uh oh. My God, what happened to you? Do you think my face is pretty? I have to finish what I started. She died, priest. Sound is fantastic. What? Uh run. Mm, mm, mm. What what is that? Another one, shit. Mortis. All right. At least I hit a checkpoint. Oh, I'm going to be quicker. Mortis. Oh. Mortis. All right, we'll get it. We'll get it. Oh, I thought I had it. More. My animation is cool. Clearly doing it wrong. Mortis. Mortis. Hmm. I'm not sure what to do. Maybe we just run? Nope, I gotta, it's gonna make me play. Alright, maybe this is, maybe I dodge after. I'll stay in the middle. Oh shit. Alright. I couldn't figure out which way you should come to him. Let's go. Oh, okay, I dodged her. There we go. We got it. Get out of the way. 
All right, we must be doing enough damage now. Almost got killed there. Got her. Oh my god. Bouncing all around the room. Blah! Move. Move. Fuck. All right, I'm getting the hang of it. Nah, it's just bad luck on that first draw there. If I can get away. Nope, nope. Oh, she just bounced around to the points of the star. Fuck. I get it. She's just bouncing around from to the point of the pentagram. Damn it. That was just sloppy. Sloppy. <laughs> God damn it. I think she must start in the top left every time. Yeah. God damn it, I thought I was moving fast enough. No. All right, it's pretty predictable at this point. Oh, she didn't stop that time. Damn it. All right, this is the run right here. Got it, got it. No oh, shit. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that's the end. At least saved. She flew out the window. Downstairs. Kill her. Oh, my God. A dog with one bullet. 
Come out of the well. I'm ready to pull the trigger. Oh, damn. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. I shall not be afraid of the terror in the night, nor of the evil that walketh in darkness. Because I have made the Lord my refuge. Because I have set my love upon him, therefore will he deliver me. I shall call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with me in trouble, he will deliver me and honor me. I can't explain what happened at that house. I can only have faith that I did the right thing. Ooh, there's five different endings, huh? Is that the good ending, I wonder? Because I didn't kill a girl, I killed the monster in the woods. <laughs> Chupacabra remains found near Sterling. Sterling PD is enlisting the help of local animal experts from the University of Connecticut at the remains of an unidentified animal were found near Sterling. The remains of an animal, which some residents are calling a Chupacabra, was discovered on Snake Meadow Hill Road by a motorist yesterday. The animal had apparently been struck by a vehicle and parts of its carcass were scattered across the road. Police say they initially investigated the gruesome scene because the motorist who discovered the remains had told them they appeared to be of a person. After arriving at the scene, police concluded that the remains were of some kind of animal. As a matter of public safety, we want to be sure about what exactly we're dealing with here, said a Sterling police spokesman. This is clearly not a deer or a coyote. If it's a mountain lion or exotic pet that escaped from its owners or an animal with rabies, we need to know about it. Animal experts attached to the investigation would not speculate about what kind of animal had been found, although they com commented that the animal was hairless, anemic, and apparently suffered from the rickets, a vitamin D deficiency that appears in animals and children who have not received enough sunlight. Ooh, so there's more. Oh, I can keep going for different endings. Let's try to find the girl. A gun with one bullet. All right, I'm gonna go back to the house here. Let's try the basement. What's? I wonder if there's something down there. It's quiet. Hmm. Nope, that wasn't it. Hmm.
Let's keep looking. Maybe the bedroom? Maybe out back? Can I go out back? No. There ain't nothing following me anymore. Uh. Let's try going left. Hmm. This looks like something. this what oh, what 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 was that what did i kill it was purple she was purple Let's leave. See what happens. Do 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 do. There's got to be something with that well or to the right of the well. Let's try that next. And even here. I don't have any more bullets, all I can do is go home. Alright, what's this ending say? Uh oh! Ending 1 of 5, murderer. Police arrest man of murdering missing girl. Accused of murdering missing girl. A New York man is custody, in custody after he confessed to the murder of a sterling girl who had been missing. John Ward of Palmyra was pulled over on Snake Meadow Hill Road last night after a state trooper reported hearing a gunshot. The officer thought it might be poachers. The officer said Ward was acting nervous and suspicious after being pulled over. When questioned, Ward reportedly said, I've killed her. According to the police report, the officer called for backup after Ward became increasingly upset, saying repeatedly that there was a demon inside her. Ward was taken to Sterling Police Headquarters for further questioning. Ward then confessed to authorities that he had shot and killed Amy Martin, a 17-year-old girl who had been missing for nine days after escaping from a mental institution. After a brief search, police located Amy's body in the woods near the now-abandoned Martin home. In addition to receiving a gunshot wound to the stomach, Amy showed injuries suggesting that she had been thrown out of the second-story window of the house. An officer who helped recover the body told reporters that Amy's face had been mutilated in a very brutal manner. Ward was found dressed as a priest when he was pulled over. It is suspected that he impersonated a priest to gain his victim's trust after... Where I lost my spot... An ordained victim. So after a Catholic authorities in Rome confirmed that Ward was not an ordained minister, the rest of the article is missing. All right, let's try a couple more. A gun with one bullet.
All right, let's go down the well and then take a right. Or I bet I could get another ending by just dying. <laughs> There's the well. Ooh, and maybe we can not shoot her, but then use our cross after we don't shoot. Like, if I purposefully miss, that'd be another one. What's that? Damn, I missed. Freaking missed. Well, there must be an ending for just leaving. No, oh, I'll probably get killed by the chupacabra. Very slow, 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 slow. So it evokes the uh, games like from the Commodore 64 era. <laughs> yeah. Nope, that's just a death. All right, I'm gonna try to shoot that. Gun with one bullet. And try to kill that guy again. Got him. Now what's it going to do now? Last thing I'm going to try, I was going to go to Amy again. This time I'll shoot away from her and then try to exercise her one last time with the cross. One more screen, we'll be out of here. Hopefully I don't die. Nope. Good ending. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. I shall not be afraid. Ah! It's hiding in the car. Father and son. Esteemed Cardinal Gifford, with all due respect, you cannot grasp the importance of the work I am doing for young Michael. 
without being present here. Michael needs my help more now more than ever. In the past few weeks, I have made great progress with Michael's affliction. Nevertheless, whatever darkness is inside of him fights back with increasing ferocity. We must not let up the fight against the enemy of such a criti- at such a criti- critical time. There is another reason why I dare not return Michael to his family nor let them see him. The darkness inside him afflicts his soul, but it also causes a terrible strain on his body. So that there may be no mistaking what I mean, I have enclosed a photograph of young Michael during one of our sessions. The photograph is missing. All right, last try. We got three endings already. So Amy's just in the next screen to the left. I'm gonna go ahead and not kill her. It's a great sound effect. Well, I think that's it. I'm not going to hunt. I'll look up the other two uh, endings online. Um, let's see. What else do I got kicking around here? Uh, da, 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 da. I could play the sequel. Maybe I'll save that for another day. Change the pace. Let's see what I can do. Itch. Hmm. Let's do another spooky one. I got a few of them. All right, this is a cheap one. It's called The Survey. Okay, let's jump right in. This is one of your typical low-budget spooky games. Probably gonna be a lot of jump scares and scare the shit out of me. All right, press the space key to start. What happened? Why is this not? Hold on a second, we have a failure. Do this instead. Oh, 
Oh, too bad. Much better. Let's try this one more time. Press E to interact with objects. I have a body, at least. That's good. Oh no, we don't want it to be that dark. Ooh, flashlight. F to flashlight, okay. Is there a light switch? All right. I've seen this house on the Unity Asset Store. <laughs> That's all right. Let's just keep rolling. Um, that's locked. Ooh, laundry room. Hey, turn on the light. Cool, all right. First things first, let's just turn on as many lights as possible. Bathroom. Hmm. I don't know what's going on in here. Ugh. It's a, it's a mess. SD2 or 11. Come on. It's a study. Oh, there's a key. Oh, come on, we gotta be able to take the key. A lit cigarette just sitting right on the desk. That's cool. Can't do anything with that. There's gotta be a way I should pick up that key, right? Maybe not. Downstairs. Is there a light switch over here? Ooh, creepy masks. Yep. Here we go, it's better. It's a mess over here. Well, those are Roman numerals, so. I already forgot what was upstairs. Pizza. All right, not a lot of light. Documents, Mary Walker. All right, I'm gonna read that in a second. I need to stop that, that, that phone stop. Um, 
Master bedroom, other bedroom, living room. Look for channel numbers. Unlock it quickly. She's watching you. What? I haven't written in this journal in a while, but I thought I'd write something down. Right now, Lilith is six years old, while Marcus, I think, four. The other day, she was painting a picture, and it looked fairly abstract at first. Just a blend of seemingly random shades and hues. After making dinner, I came back to find her replicating a painting we had in our kitchen. It was remarkable. I haven't told Joseph yet, but I think Lilith could end up being a very special girl. I asked her where she learned to paint that way, but she responded in a confused manner, as if she was doing, was casually playing around with paint. She managed to almost completely re replicate the artwork, including even the smallest details of the piece. Oh, excuse me. I'll definitely have to keep an eye on her talent. Right now, jo Joseph and I are working parent, both working parents. Financially, we're doing well. No real troubles, no family issues either, besides his drinking problem. I'll finish this entry up after I cook dinner. Mary Walker. Okay. Oh, space to use phone. Enter five-digit password. Well, I don't know what the password is. Nine D, D I. Look for the channel numbers. D I is nine. Turn that off. Okay, no jump scares yet. I'm sure it's coming. So nine, DI, nine, DI. Channel, okay. Four D. Two S D. remote mm. I need a password for this phone D nine D I two S D He'll get it. So S D S D D S D D D I Four Two. 
go outside I wonder no oh I didn't check this door locked eight go and that stuff is spinning Just got a shiver. Just got a shiver. Unlock it quickly. Master bedroom, other bedroom, living room. I can't actually take that. Master, other bedroom, living room. So the living room is over here. Eight, go. My Japanese creeping in. I keep thinking go. I'm like, oh, five. Eight, go. So master bedroom. It was in the closet, right? No. Hmm. This is clearly the master bedroom, but I don't see anything in here. see it let's check out these shelves unity t-shirt nothing hiding behind the curtain Wow, I just, I don't know. It looks cool. I just don't know what to do. Oh, you can see channel eight. Okay. It's just the, the brightness is so. All right, master bedroom. Got it, other bedroom. Eight two nine. Let's shut these off. That's creeping me out. Eight two nine. Oh, there's the last TV. Eight two nine. Nine seven. Eight two nine nine seven. Closet JPEG, help JPEG, 952, sleep, movies, or look at those, mail, work. Hey, it's your manager, Mark. Are you available to work next weekend? Emma can't come in, so it will only be you and Katie. It's going to be a pretty busy weekend, and we can use the extra hand. Thanks. Help, please. Attempt number 89264. If you are receiving this, you have been chosen to participate in a nationwide survey. Okay, there we go. Here's the title of the game. <laughs> we believe you are qualified to be a representative of a specific demographic group we are studying. To continue, please proceed to the survey found on your mobile device.
Press continue to begin. Are you currently situated in your home? Yes, I am. Dude, I don't, that TV thing was, I, I got lucky that I saw one of those numbers. Oh, I know I, I bet I had to have the lights off, but I'm a coward. <laughs> I wasn't gonna walk around with the lights off. Are you currently employed? Actually, no. Do you use your mobile device often? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna sit, yeah, yeah, let's be honest. Did you forget your password for your mobile device? Of course not. Was finding the password for your phone easy or hard? Uh, if we're talking about this phone, I'm gonna say hard. Is anyone with you in your house currently? No, I hope not. Is anyone supposed to be with you currently? No. Are you a college student? No. Do you enjoy being home alone? Sure, yeah. Does it ever feel creepy when you are home alone? Of course it does. Have you ever experienced the phenomenon of feeling as if you are being watched, but in reality you are not? Definitely. Individuals report this phenomenon quite frequently, especially when around certain paintings, dolls, or statues. Are any of those objects inside your house? Um... Statues or dolls? Uh, not, no, I got a lot of stuff in boxes right now, actually. How many televisions are currently in your house? One, two, three. Two plus. Thank you for your participation. Please take a short break. We will continue the survey shortly. Okay. Hmm. All right, this is creepy. Wait. <clears throat> Time until next hint. Oh, okay. I don't want to be reading those. I want to be, uh... that window was open for a minute. All right, that fucking creeped me out. I don't want to find out what happened. I don't want to find out what happened. Just give me the key. Whew. Get goosebumps. What was that crash? Oh, what's this? Something broke, and then there's an, a message. Uh, nope, pause, pause. You know what? Unpause. Let's shut this off. Turn the damn TV off. All right. Local prodigy. Lilith Walker began painting when she was six years old. Though only being 12, the child prodigy is able to recreate masterpieces with only rudimentary materials. The child belongs to the local Walker household. Her father, Joseph Walker, a construction worker, along with Mary Walker, working as a secretary at a law firm. According to Mary and Joseph, Lilith loved to paint and expressed her talent early. She also stated that she practices anywhere from five to 10 hours a day just to perfect her craft. Her artwork is gaining popularity as demand for her pieces and replications have skyrocketed recently. Although she enjoys painting, she also plays a variety of instruments such as the violin, piano, and the cello. On top of painting, she also enjoys... All right.
to Dude, the, the lights went out. What the fuck? Turn the light back on. Turn the light back on. Dude, the shadow fuck creeps me out, dude. Where's the light switch for the hall? Stop turning the lights out. Dude, this game. I turned that off earlier too. Can I open the fridge? No, that'd be. Well, that statue moved. That statue moved. That was on the table. know what to do so my current goal is to turn on all the lights constantly <sighs> what the fuck Can't do anything with the PC. Oh man. All right. Thought I saw something. Thankfully, I didn't. Oh, here, something new. What the fuck, dude? What, what is going on? What is that? No, no, pause. Lilith Note 1. September. Dude, that crying. I asked mom to get me a diary after my first painting sold. I just thought it would be nice to write down some of my thoughts. Mom and dad want me to keep painting, but I don't know if I should. It seems like all they want to do is make money from it. This reporter came in the other day. His name was Rick Driver, and he asked us a bunch of questions. Apparently, we're going to be in an article in the local news. Mom said it would help with my publicity. I hardly even like painting, but whatever makes them happy, I guess. I guess. I actually like playing the violin and piano way more than painting. I mean, it's okay, but it's not something I enjoy doing that much. 
I just hope they include Marcus in the article. I know how much he loves writing. It seems like mom and dad barely even pay attention to him. Is this my fault? Maybe he hates me. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll trip, fall down the stairs, and break my arm. So I can't paint anymore, at least for a little while. All right. Where's that f crying coming from? I don't like it. Fuck. Oh, I just saw a shadow. What the fuck? What is that? I'm gonna go look. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look. It's gone. It's gone. Okay. In the bathroom. Keep that on. here. Give me some steak. Oh boy. All right, no, that's uh, that's where I found the last note, right? It's gonna be something new kicking around somewhere. See if there's anything new on the phone. No. Oh. How are you doing? I know it must be hard for you with college, work, and taking care of Lilith. I'm at a hotel right now, and I'm supposed to be supposed to meet my clients tomorrow. I should be back within a week. Stay strong, Mom. Eight nine two six four. 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 There's nothing to unlock. Eight nine two six four. Oh, I can continue the survey, okay. For the next portion of the survey, we will need you to fulfill a request. We will need you to check if your bathroom appliances are working, specifically 
the sink and light switches. Please enter the bathroom in your master bedroom and check if those appliances are working properly. Okay, those appear to be working properly. I'm going to hide in the corner. Right. Did you notice anything strange? No. She heard you. Hide. The next set of questions involves your personal preferences concerning music. Do you enjoy listening to music? Of course I do. Do you enjoy listening to rock? Yes. Do you enjoy listening to rap? Mm, not particularly. Do you enjoy listening to classical music? Yes. Do you remember your sister's taste in music? No. On top of being a talented painter, she was also a talented violin player. Do you remember her playing any songs on a violin? No. Were you ever jealous of how gifted she was, how everyone always paid attention to her? No. We, met, we have a song that you might enjoy listening to. Turn on the radio downstairs and listen to the song. to listen to the whole song or should I walk around uh, just take a walk hide in the closet again They want me to just listen to the whole thing? Looks like writing right there. Shit. Ah! God damn it. I 
I can't turn on the lights. Marcus note number one, September 3rd, 2009. So my sister gave me a journal even though my mom said no. She said that after her first painting sold, mom would get her a few. She gave me one of them, so I'm kind of happy about that. Nobody really knows what I'm into, that I'm really into writing besides my sister. This reporter met my family the other day. After cleaning the house, taking out the trash, doing the dishes, wiping the floors clean, and sweeping up all the broken beer glasses from dad, I assume. And lastly, after vacuuming the house, I was excited to meet the reporter. I saw him pull into the drive <laughs> driveway, pen and notepad in hand. As I saw him get out of his car, my dad told me that I had to stay in my room. I tried to ask him for a reason, but he just sort of pushed me in and slammed the door shut. The door, just before closing shut, struck my nose and I started bleeding. It was really the first time I've ever seen that much blood. It tasted very metallic, as if someone took a cup of water and dropped a bunch of coins in there, then drank it. I never got to meet that reporter, even though I really wanted to. Marcus. All right, I think we gotta go back up. Oh, statue in the hall. Statue in the hall. Okay, that was screaming. Another note. Oh, look at the blood trail. What? No, 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 no. Lilith note number two. I'm kind of sad. I mean, I'm only 15, but mom and dad are driving this whole painting thing a little crazy. They keep asking to paint for hours and hours and hours. It's not even something I'm passionate about. I really like playing the violin, but I'm not that great at it, but it's really fun. Both of my parents are really pushing the, uh, this painting thing. They quit both of their jobs just to pursue it because it apparently makes them a lot of money. They never even asked if I wanted to keep doing this. I guess I don't really have a choice right now other than to keep painting. Maybe I'll make an excuse, or maybe I'll try telling them no. I wish they would pay more attention to Marcus, too. He puts so much effort in everything, and he really does well at school. It was Christmas the other week, and we had some family over. Marcus just looked so gloomy, so alone. Nobody even got, a Christ got him a Christmas present, besides me, anyway. It's like he doesn't even exist to anyone else. I feel terrible. Also, Dad has been drinking a lot more lately. I mean, he always had some drinks, but he's doing it more and more. He gets scary sometimes, Lilith. Okay, can't go in. Can't turn on the light. Ooh, I can turn the lights back on. Dude, that shadow, my shadow just made me jump. Holy shit. Hmm, okay. This should go back up. Oh, okay, something in the office. So we got the key now. We know it goes to one of two doors. Let's try this door. Ooh, let's continue the survey, shall we? Did you enjoy the song? That yeah, wasn't bad. Do you remember what happened to her? No. Do you remember what happened to your family? No. 
The screaming, can you hear it? Yeah, yeah, I heard it. Have you seen her? No. Are you lying? Yes. She's watching you. Do you feel her eyes on you? Yes. Turn around. No. Oof. This is this kind of creepy, man. Oh shit! All right, I'm closing this door behind me. May third, two thousand thirteen. I hate painting. Mom and Dad want me to finish one piece per week. It makes anywhere from eight to twelve hours a day for me to meet that quota. On top of going to school. I tried to tell my dad to slow things down, but he wouldn't listen. Today I tried to stand up to them. I tried telling them my, that I didn't have the right color of red, so I wouldn't be able to finish the painting, even though I did. So he called Marcus down. He grunted, so you don't have the right color of red. You could smell the alcohol from his breath. He took Marcus and he started hitting him until blood started to drip from his nose, and eventually his lips started to tear open. He threw Marcus to the ground and continued to beat him and kick him until he was a bloody mess. He took a can of booze and poured it all over Marcus and walked off muttering something. Mom just turned a blind eye and started cleaning up the blood. Marcus sat there unconscious for a bit and I helped him up to his room. He didn't say anything. All he did was smile. He had a wide grin on his face. I stayed with him until he fell asleep reading the book about cars. Oh, statue. Well, they're forcing me to go this way for a reason, I guess. What is this? I can see a figure in the master bedroom. Oh, here we go. Error 82997. Oh man, I guess we gotta go. I'm going for it. Oh! Yeah, you can stand there by yourself. As a matter of fact, there we go. We may have to, we may have to go in there. Turn the light on. <laughs> Gone. Disappeared. Okay. Documents. Death of two siblings. Oh, God. October 1st, 2016. Two bodies were recovered after a fire erupted inside a suburban house near a local elementary school. The fire apparently started late at night, as neighbors were the ones to report the incident. Names have not been released, but the victims were identified to be a brother and sister in their late teens. The two were home alone while their mother was on a business trip. Their brother was going to high school and also worked a part-time job at a grocery. How the fire started is not clear, but authorities have not ruled out foul play. According to investigators, a candle that was knocked over could have caused the tragedy. Officials have not ruled out foul play as a cause, but aren't suspicious of it due to the circumstances of the situation. Oh boy, here we go.
What the fuck? Is he coming in after me? Should I hide? Trying to walk. What the fuck? Turn on the light, dude. There's nothing I can do. Ah! I got killed. Eight nine two six four. Why is it zoomed out? Oh, it's because I hit the right Eight, button. Nine, two, six, four. Eight, nine, two, six, four. Eight, nine, two, six, four. Eight, nine, two, Part one. Six, he watched her writhing in pain as her condition set in, knowing nothing could be done to help her. Almost all her family, she loved him the most, yet... Turn around. Alright, Alright, I don't. Eight, nine, two, six, four. Eight, nine, two, six, four, everybody. Okay. There was a light switch for the hallway. I can't find it now. Eight nine two six four. Oh, I just made it all stroby. No, oh, I'll well, leave it on. Make it scary. Eight nine two six four. Can I? Oh, time until next hint. I got like three minutes to kill. Um. can't go in there. There's nothing in here but the bathroom. Whew. What about this? I still can't open that. There's nothing going on with the computer. Six four. Eight, nine, two. I can't interact with that. Mm. 
kind of lost here, I'll be honest. 89264. I mean, if I could lock and unlock my phone, I could try typing that in. Eight nine two six four eight nine two six four. Um, less than a minute till the next hit. All right, I'll keep walking around. Can I touch the saw or? Ooh. No, I can't do anything with that. Whoa, what? Six. Ooh, maybe I should interact with all of these. Interesting, I didn't think that would be a possibility. Okay, I did it out of order. Shit. Alright, so eight was downstairs. That's what I figured as soon as I was able to interact with them. See, the, all right, they're back up on the wall. Eight. Gonna find nine. I believe nine was up here. Nine, I can't remember. Eight, nine, two, six, four. Eight, nine, two. Okay. Eight. Nines over here. Six is there. Two. Six is in the closet downstairs, and four is right there. Okay. I did that. Oh, that door opened. Okay, okay. Oh, it's her room, her painting room. The screaming, the crying, can you hear it too? For eternity I have lived, and for one more I shall live on. 
trapped inside these memories with the devil himself. Uh oh. Uh oh, I heard that. I can't move. Today I woke up and I can't really explain it, but my right hip just feels really extremely stiff. I tried to get out of bed, but I can barely turn my body without feeling pain. Update. My parents took me to the hospital just in case it was severe or life-threatening, but the staff seemed to be clueless as to what I actually have. They said they will need to complete further x-rays, possibly even an MRI, in order to verify their diagnosis. Hopefully, I won't have to paint or anything. Ugh. I also, ran, I also had a really weird dream. I was alone in the house with Marcus, but for some reason he was always afraid of me. Every time I would try to get close to him, he would run away in fear. It was such a weird dream, because in a way, it felt like it lasted forever. All right, the survey is broken. I heard glass shattering. Uh, everything's falling off the walls. It sounded like it came from downstairs. Uh, I'm just gonna double check up here. Uh, all right, I think we're fine. I have a feeling bad things are about to happen down here. Look at that face on the wall. Dude, let's just leave. Why are we still here? Let's leave. Oh my god. I got two notes. All right, we'll just this one first. Marcus did on number two. My parents took Lilith to the hospital after my sister said she felt immobile around her hip. She said it felt completely stiff as if all of the muscles surrounding her hip had turned to bone. The other day, dad threw me down the stairs because Lilith's paintings weren't selling as much as they used to. He thought it was an entertaining way to encourage her to paint better as he phrased it. I dislocated my shoulder on the way down after repositioning the joint back into the socket. I made a sling with some old rags I found in the closet. It still stings, but it should heal within a few weeks to a couple months. School isn't too bad. I'm working on this little project with some of my friends. We're trying to create our own braking system for a car, something that can be controlled remotely. I wonder if I can reverse engineer it to do the opposite task, and maybe cancel the braking system remotely. That would be an interesting challenge, as long as I don't have to stay home, right? All right, enough of the... Ugh. <laughs> it's going to be hard to read with that going in my left ear. My parents took Lilith to the hospital after my sister said she felt immobile around her hip. Oh, no, I read that already. Diagnosis. To the Walker family. We had some difficulty in regards to diagnosing your daughter's specific condition, but we have concluded that it is fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva. It is very rare, but severe condition where the patient's soft tissue, when repaired, becomes ossified, basically turning into bone. This is due to a mutation in the repair mechanism of the body that results in this condition. There are treatment options to slow down the process of the condition, but I admit the future looks fairly grim. In all honesty, this is what will eventually happen. The disease will spread throughout her body until most of her soft tissue, including tendons, ligaments, and even muscle, will become ossified. The most we can do is provide medication in order to relieve the pain, but other than that, the condition has always been fatal. Your daughter might be able to make it to age 40 if she's lucky. Please let us know what direction you would like to take. Thank you for your patience. Oh boy, here we go. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Survey is still broken. Light is out in the living room again. Stay on, please. Do I dare? 
dude, that picture. Bathroom light on. Turn the bathroom light on, please. Thank you. Oh, man. Uh oh. I didn't do it. According to a recent poll, infidelity is at an all time high. This may be due to marrying too young, lack of commitment, or even financial instability. Let us examine the story of Joseph and Mary Walker, the two married and bore a daughter, Lilith, who was very talented in many artistic mediums, especially in painting. Joseph and Mary also had a son named Marcus. Joseph worked as a construction worker while Mary worked as a secretary for a local business. Soon after discovering Lilith's talents, her parents encouraged her greatly to continue and perfect her skills. Eventually, a high enough demand for her paintings allowed the Walkers to become financially stable simply by selling Lilith's art. Both Joseph and Mary quit their jobs as Lilith's paintings sold anywhere from $5,000 to $15,000 a piece, depending on the buyer. Due to this high demand, Joseph and Mary began to live life far above their means, taking advantage of their gifted child in order to satisfy their own greed. It started off with Joseph burning Marcus with cigarettes if Lilith refused to work. Slowly, the abuse became worse and more intense until one episode landed Marcus in the hospital. Marcus had several bruises along with a dislocated arm. The family was forced to cover up the incident and no charges were filed. This abuse continued for a long time. Marcus grew accustomed to it. It was simply a part of his life, just as much as breathing or sleeping. After Lilith was diagnosed with a rare bone condition, everything changed. She lost her ability to paint, leading the family into a period of financial hardships. Joseph wasn't able to find work due to his alcoholism, but Mary was able to find a job at her old company. Her former employer kept in touch with her throughout the years. Tension began to build within the family. Marcus usually remained passive among family affairs, but the situation gave him much joy. They were suffering, and he knew it. He couldn't have been happier. 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 Oh, man. He couldn't have been happier. No. He couldn't have been happier. He couldn't have been happier. Oh, God. I can't turn it off. It wants me to go outside, doesn't it? No, no, no. Oh no, I can, I can hear footsteps. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh man, he's right outside the door. Can I hide in the closet? Can I hide in the closet? Hide in the closet, hide in the closet. Oh, this is, this is... He's gonna totally open the door, dude. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna open the door. 
We're gonna open the shutters. All right, he's knocking now. Dude, I'm trying. No. Hell no. Alright, I don't hear anything. Oh, he left a note. Left a note. Pause. Documents. Lilith note number five. My parents gave me the news, so I have this condition called fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva. Basically, it's a condition where my soft tissue, ligaments, tendons, and muscles gradually turn into bone. They said that eventually I'll lose mobility in my arms, legs, neck, everywhere until I need a caretaker to basically do everything for me. Right now, I feel it in my arms and torso. For now, I just sort of stay in my bed. It hurts to walk around. I can't really exercise or damage my body in any way or else it'll speed up the process. I mean, I'm only 15, so this is a lot to take in, knowing that I'll slowly become more and more immobile. It's a bit ironic, isn't it? I wish that I could stop painting or that I wouldn't have to anymore, and this was the answer I received. The best they could do was prescribe medication for the pain. A year from now, there's a good chance that I won't be able to walk and I'll be in a wheelchair or worse. I just hope my family will be stable without my help. I'll be a pretty big burden. The other day, I overheard my parents arguing. My mom brought up the idea of getting a divorce. I feel like this is all my fault, Lilith. Mm, nothing in there. All right, nothing in there. Dude, that painting is just... I don't like it. Alright, the survey is still broken. Mm. else in there. See, so I can read this. Oh, oh shit. Marcus, note number three. I overheard them talking about what Lilith's condition was. Apparently, she has some sort of bone disorder. Basically, her body keeps becoming more and more immobilized until she's basically paralyzed. The process can take a while, but it continually gets worse and worse. They seem very worried about it. As far as I know, Lilith won't be able to paint. I wonder what will happen. Mom and Dad were screaming at each other the other day. I'll never s I've will never, i never seen them argue like that. It was quite entertaining seeing them bicker and yell. I had a wide grin across my face as I watched the spectacle. My parents have been trying to find work ever since they heard the news, but only my mom has been able to find a job with her old employer. Dad hasn't had any luck. This is quite an unfortunate situation. I did a bit of research on the condition and it seems incurable. My parents seem like they're in a state of panic. I've never seen them like this before. Frantic, scared, and unstable. I've never been more excited in my life. Marcus. Oh shit, all right. I guess. Hmm. Hmm. Head downstairs.
Fuck you, painting. All right, nothing on that chair. Right. I had to move my drink because if I get startled, I might knock it off my table. The survey still broken. Okay, master bedroom is clean. I can never tell if that's my footsteps or the big bad coming after me. Uh, I keep waiting for that computer just to do something. Two minutes until next hen, okay. We'll figure it out. <sighs> I just want to leave. Oh, here we go. Found it. Marcus note number four. My mom showed him the divorce paperwork and he was livid. I've never seen my dad this furious, his bloodshot eyes trembling in fear because he was powerless against her decision. He kept taking beer bottles and smashing them against the kitchen table after he heard the news. She just said she was tired of him drinking all day and not contributing to the family at all. I left a little surprise for him in the car. He'll find out while he's driving. Well, for now, I guess it'll just be Mom, Lilith, and I. She asked me to get a part-time job since we'll need the money to help with Lilith's medical bills. I don't mind working, even though I'm still in high school. I'll be pretty busy, but I guess I'll just have to deal with it. It'll be hard, though. I went to the doctor the other day, and he examined my shoulder. It turns out I've had a torn rotator cuff for a while now but I've never been able to get it checked out because of dad. I haven't been able to rotate my arm past 90 degrees without feeling the tearing sensation on the back of my shoulder. Thanks, dad. I guess in the end, everyone gets what they deserve. Uh, uh, it's not letting me leave. Uh, son of a bitch, son of a bitch. Mm. I couldn't run. I couldn't move. All right, another note. Suicide note. It's been hard the last year. I've been working overtime almost every week at my job ever since the divorce just to cover everything. Lilith, well, she was bedridden and relied on Marcus for just about everything. Marcus was attending college and working at the same time. I went on a business trip for about a week, and I didn't get the news until I came home. The house caught fire. I was told that Lilith died a horrific death, burning alive as the flames consumed her. They said the fire started in her room, most likely by a candle that was tipped over. The neighbors. They said all they heard was a haunting scream, like an animal that knows its death is approaching. Everything is gone, my kids, my house. Did I deserve this? I was so blinded by greed. I'm a horrible person. I let my son be abused for years just to force my daughter to paint and make myself money. I guess Joseph got what was coming to him and now it's my turn. 
I just wish I could watch over them, Mary Walker. statue. Where do I go? What do I do? Stop that thing from a drunk driver was recently killed in an accident outside a local liquor store. According to friends and family, the man had been going through a divorce with his wife. Probably trying to drink his sorrows away, he swerved off the road, crashing his car into a tree. Officers have noted that there might have been tampering involved with the braking system of the vehicle. Fortunately, the individual suffered greatly while dying. I know it's certain someone that would be happy to know so. I knew that's what Don't happened. Don't worry, I'm stuck as well. This was Joseph bringing the local news to you. Statue gone, statue's gone. Let's check the living room real quick. Yeah, I figured that'd be fine. Mm. Dude, look. <laughs> Let's go say hi. Oh. He's gone. Nope. Here's a note. Lilith note number six. It's been almost a year since I've been diagnosed. It's gotten worse recently. I'm losing control of hands, so I, it's getting quite difficult to write. One day, what, what? Well, I'm reading, stop it. All right, Mark has been taking care of me. I feel like I'm a burden to him. Top of school, part-time job. Da, da, da. She can't walk. Fate part of the day is when his brother comes to check on me. Is this my punishment? Just gonna get to it. Here it comes. Coming across the hall to get me. <coughs> Turn on the light. She's taking her sweet time. Almost there. Uh oh. There's <laughs> no one there. I guess I gotta go. 
He's gonna be waiting right around the corner, I bet. Nope, nope. Another paper, shit. All right. Nope. Close the door. No. Nope. Marcus note number five. I can barely keep up with everything. I was accepted into university that I really wanted to attend, but decided not to go through with it. If I did leave, no one would be here to take care of my sister. Da -da 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 -da. I decided to attend community college first and save some money. Also, I won't be in a ton of debt after I graduate, so it'll be nice. Last night, I saw something a bit disturbing. As I made my way to my room, Lilith's door was slightly ajar, and I could hear this high-pitched scra scraping sound, and it was my sister scraping her nails against the wall. I turned the light on, and there was blood covering her hand. She was running the tips of her fingers across the wall, up to the point where her fingernails were now loosely attached to her finger. She seemed so out of touch with reality. I looked at her other hand, but it was bent in an awkward position her wrist bending toward her body while her fingers look stiff. This thing in my house, I don't think this is my sister. My sister was a painter, a talented girl with immense potential. Her eyes gradually turned towards me and I felt them almost reaching out to me, pleading for comfort. I gave her none. Ooh. door to her room is opening. Another note. Mom is leaving for about a week. She's going on a business trip, so she's leaving me in charge to take care of the house and my sister. I check on her briefly about once or twice a day, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we basically Marcus is going crazy and enjoying oh, he's begun to hate her oh it's turned into a sadistic little bastard Oh no. One more document. This will be my last letter that I write. I can feel my right hand becoming immobile and stiff. Mom left a couple days ago and it's been up to Marcus to take care of me. Even though he visits have been getting shorter and less frequent over the last few months, I understand. I'm just a burden to him and my mom. He hasn't checked up on me ever since she left. I've tried everything, knocking and banging my hand against the wall, screaming. I mean, that's all I can really do since I'm practically immobile. Sometimes I get my hopes up, hearing him walk up the stairs. Just maybe he'll walk to the door and check on me. Did I deserve this for not standing up to my parents and letting all this happen? All of this, it's my fault. I'm sorry, Marcus. I promise I'll never be a burden to you ever again. <laughs> God is dead. Where do I go? I need to get out of this house. Let me out. Mm, what's going on?
Oh no, do I go in this room? Make it stop! What do I do? Oh, I thought it was, it was ending for a minute. Wait, what was that? Oh, uh, no, never mind, never mind. Scary if I hadn't already been killed like twice already. Oh, see, look at I'm still alive. Marcus note number seven. Life is pretty quiet, to be honest, right now. Between school and work, it's a bit stressful and it's not as bad as before. Mom is set to come home in a few days. It was nice having the house to myself for about a week. I'll admit, sometimes it gets eerily quiet. And sometimes I hear these soft knocks coming from the walls. Other times I hear crying and sobbing. According to the police report, both bodies were recovered. So, Fuck. Officials also found something strange. Her body was starving. What officials think occurred was during her final moments, as an act of desperation, she lit a candle inside. Her younger brother, Marcus Walker, might have neglected her to such a degree. She chose to end her life to ease her suffering. Emotions ranging from jealousy, hatred, Enviousness and frustration might have drove him to neglect her, despite her cries for help. Due to her rare disorder, she was extremely immobile and required help for the simplest activities. She required Marcus for everything. Marcus might have held animosity towards her, as for almost his whole life, everyone had paid their attention to her. Perhaps Marcus wanted her to feel isolated and alone, an emotion he was very familiar with. He wanted vengeance for a crime she didn't commit. Marcus's body was mostly unharmed, though he was not conscious at the scene. He was taken to a local hospital, where he currently resides. He is currently in a coma induced by smoke inhalation and has been unconscious ever since the fire. No one knows when, or if, he will ever wake up or what he is experiencing. He could be experiencing nothing at all, or he might be suffering. The only living relative he had was his mother, 
Mary Walker, who committed suicide shortly after she heard about the incident. His father, Joseph Walker, was killed in a suspicious road incident where his brakes stopped working while driving under the influence. Due to his unusual situation, no one is left to decide whether or not they should keep him alive in his coma. Many may wonder whether he regrets his actions, whether he regrets neglecting his sister, starving her, and psychologically torturing her to the point of suicide. Others speculate that years of domestic abuse by his father Joseph, along with neglect from his family, left him psychologically scarred. Whatever the case may be, he tortured and isolated his sister. His sister, who loved him, and did everything necessary to protect him. Hopefully all members of the family get what they deserve. In Marcus's case, he's stuck in his own personal purgatory. Stuck in a place between life and death, an eternity of suffering awaits him. Thank you for listening. This was Joseph Walker, bringing your local news to you. Ah! Close the door. <laughs> there you have it. coming <laughs> she's still coming she gonna get stuck on the bureau <laughs> No, she's still coming. No. All right, I think she hit an invisible wall. No, no she's still going. I leave now? No. I need to see if she'll like it. <laughs> She's not going to go anywhere. No, she's just going to crawl into the wall. Well, that was the survey. Right on. Well. I'm a sucker for PT-like games. That was fun. Especially for a low-budget game. I am going to do one more. Let's see. If I can get this to work. Something to cleanse the palate. Um, let's see if I can find it. Wow. Okay, I found it. The worst game. No, I would actually say this is a good game.
Although this is the most sadistic game I've ever played. And it's extremely difficult. Winnie the Pooh, Home Run Derby. This game, for the longest time, it was just in Japanese, but it was kind of a meme game because it's so difficult. And I'm going to try to beat it right now. All right. Ugh. It starts out easy enough. I have to hit three home runs in the next seven balls. Boom. There's one right there. Such a happy, feel-good game. How could it be? I mean, it's obviously targeted at little kids. Couldn't, shouldn't be that hard. There's another home run. The difficulty that ramps up is unreal. There we go. I beat the first. Oh, no. Nope. I didn't hit it out. Got it. And one more for good measure. Easy, right? Easy. Stage two. Lumpy. Five homers on 15. Oh, he's bringing the heat now. No, oh, that sucked. Nah, not far enough. Boom. Mm, no, not far enough. Got all of that one. A little bit early. All right, two more, two more. All right, one more, I think we got it. No, not far enough. All right, I'm just gonna let him strike me out because I made the target. All right, screw you, Lumpy. All right, Piglet, let's go. Eight out of 20. See, that's a Bach. You can't do that. Ugh. Got it. I may not beat this one on the first try. Jesus, bringing the heat. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it. God damn it. Oh man, I gotta hit like 75% of these out. It ain't gonna happen. Ooh, straight. Deep center. Three more? Maybe, maybe. Get out, get out. Shit.
One more. Got a chance. Nope, that's not gonna do it. Got it. Just enough. All right, difficulty is going to start ramping up pretty heavily. What is that bullshit? Come on. Boom. Uh, a little late. Starting to vary his feet up now. A little ahead of it. That was terrible. I need eight more out of 14, out of 13. Shit. God damn it. Ugh, still mathematically possible, but probably not going to happen. Get out, get out. Ugh. I need to hit every single one of these out. Oh, I'm not even going to swing. garbage. All right, try again. What the hell? I just didn't even swing. Too early. There we go. Oh, we're on a streak now. Damn it. Getting murdered. All right, five out of the next 12. Nope. Oh, I'm blowing it. Not far enough. Oh, he gave it to me. Nice. Four more. Come on now. Shit, foul ball. Damn it. 
Damn it. Come on, three more. Those slow ones are almost impossible. I gotta go perfect now. One more, come on now. Oh, God damn it. Oh, I still got one more? Oh, uh, I shouldn't have stopped. <sighs> this game is evil. It's a good start. Terrible. Am I not? I think I'm drifting behind the plate a little bit on some of these. Jesus. Ugh. This is ridiculous. Got that one. There we go. That slow one. Should get, oh my god! You gotta get it right in the barrel. That's gotta be out, right? There we go. Terrible. Four more. Come on. There's no way. Yeah, that's it. Gonna be 11 again. Or ten. Ugh. This isn't even where I thought I'd get stuck. <laughs> this what the fuck? this game come on there we go Got it. When they throw some inside, I get screwed up. Ugh, foul.
damn it. Too late. Get out, get out. Long shot, but... Gotta be shitting me. Got it. All right. Oof. All right. Things are gonna get a little hairy now. No pun intended. That is the most bullshit pitch in the world. What the fuck? I think I can get used to these though. Maybe not. God, my. Mm. Brutal. All right, I can't even get used to it. There we go. Nope. <sighs> I'm going to get 10. All right, it's a good practice run, though. Perfect. Foul ball. All right, ten. That's a good first attempt. I think I'll get past this one quicker than I did with Rue. It's just a guess. Mm. Wow.
Ugh, killing me. I've seen a mouse's now. It's it. it feels like it's late. Done. I'm already done. Swinging late on every pitch. Ugh. All right, I'm not even going to swing. It's going to take forever. The reason I picked this is because as annoying as this guy is, and then I forget who's next, but Owl and Christopher Robin are just brutally unfair to the point where it's kind of hysterical. God. Is that good? There we go. Too late. Again. God, the happy, ridiculously happy music just makes this a hundred times more frustrating. See, it's not out either. Every time, my God. I'm not even going to get five again. There we go. So ridiculous. Oh, we're done. Hold on a sec.
One more try. Let's go. Okay. It's either early or it's late every time. Yeah, it's never going to be enough home runs, though, because I'm going to keep striking out. God damn it. All right, got another one. That's ridiculous. I'm already toast. I get. Yeah. This is so bad. There we go. We got one. It'd have to go perfect. Nope, foul ball. Awful. It's so cheap. Honestly, I'm about two seconds from knocking rabbit's teeth out. I'm not even going to swing on the last one. What the hell? Uh, my God. There we go. Got all that one. I swear to God, like... The input lag is unreal. Here we go. Can we at least get to 10 again, my god. Cluster fuck. It's not even worth trip. All right.
just speechless at this point. There we go, finally. Not even halfway. I need a little bit of luck here, getting a roll. All right, I'll take it. Oh, come on, I thought I was all over that one. Fucking hell. Mm. Nope. It's just not going to happen. Ugh. <sighs> Got him. All right. Let's see if we can get a PR at least. That'd be something. Come on. Get out. Come on, I thought I had that one. Not enough. Making a lot more contact, but it's never going over. There we go. Kill. Crush that one. Awful. Just pathetic. First try, I got 10, and I can't even get more than that now. Boom. Get out. There we go. Starting to blow it now again. You're on pace, but barely. Oh, 
Fuck. Fuck. Not far enough, damn it. Ooh. Ah, I got that one. Those slow pitches have been killing me. Shit. Get out. There you go. Damn it. I'm blowing it. Four more. Come on. Shit. Too late. God, any luck that I would have had. Fuck. Oh, bad start. Come on, I thought that was good. Come on. The song is going to haunt me forever. It's over already. Crush that one.
terrible. Okay. Can I get a streak going here? That would be great. Come on. Come on. That pitch is brutal. So dead. No love. There we go. Nah, forget it. Come on. Killing me, come on. Same thing every time. Give me a break. All 
I, uh, I don't even know what to do at this point. <laughs> God. Finally, God. I'm done. Maybe one more. God. First five pitches, not even one. Come on. Finally, when it doesn't matter. Pitch is impossible. I chose to play this. It's not like I didn't know how frustrating and awful it would be. But like I'm older and wiser, I should be able to beat a simple kid's game. Apparently I can't.
Get an ah. Shit. Shit. Damn it. Come on. Uh, here's where it all falls apart. Yep, yep. Shit, come on. Get over. Got it. Boom. There it is. Finally. God. One more for good measure. Woo. Fuck you, rabbit. Okay, here's where, here's where the real pain begins. 19 out of 35. This is bull such bullshit. <laughs> what is this? I don't know if I'll hit one over. I don't even know what to do. Yay, there's one. Let's just try to aim for the middle. Hmm. A little insight on that.
a little bit late. That was terrible. No, oh, no love. At least this one seems a lot more doable than Rabbit. I mean, first try, I've already got 14 to 19 with a few pitches left. Only four short, not bad. Not a good start. Oh, it's not going well at all. Uh, we're falling apart now. Starting to lose my focus here. Here we go, that's a good one. Oh, I hit a liner right back at him. Teach him a lesson for throwing that these junk pitches.
All right, we've done all right the first two tries. Let's give it one more. No, I think fatigue is a part of it at this point. That was terrible. Losing focus. This one's already over. There's no way I'm going to hit 80% of them over. There we go. No chance, but I want... I want to at least get a few good swings in here, get a good groove going, maybe I'll get another chance. I get a lot of hits that are just short. Well, we hit double digits again at least. All right, we just need to get hot. Ridiculous, come on.
Come on. What a horrible game. like luck <laughs> that one's better uh, I'm coming unhinged here Ugh. One more. This is the last one. We either beat him or that's gonna be it. <laughs> what a start. Come on. Why is he so slow? There we go. Now I'm ahead of them all. the worst. All right, that's it. I'm pretty much mathematically out at this point. That's enough for me for one night. I've been streaming for a while. Uh, it's fun to do a variety of some uh, off the wall indie games. Those are fun. Uh, when I come back, I'm not sure which games I'm going to play. Maybe some more uh, variety. Um, I got my capture card working. It was broken for a while, so maybe I'll play uh, some console stuff. But uh, anyway, thanks to everyone that stopped by. Uh, I'll tweet out whatever I'm going to play next, but uh, until then, thanks a lot, and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.